Here's some examples of kinetic recoveries gone wrong that have resulted in vehicle damage and death. I don't want this to happen to you or your friends, so this video is about learning the difference between kinetic and tow recovery. But first, let's talk about where the following recoveries went wrong. Ryan died because this recovery was done incorrectly. So sad. Way too much energy is used in this recovery. And what's more, the snatch straps are joined with a bow shackle, which is an absolute no-no. The driver in this vehicle dies, and it looks like they were using a chain set up for a kinetic recovery. So sad. In this footage, they're set up for a tow recovery, but they actually perform a kinetic recovery. That's part of the reason we're seeing such catastrophic failures. Look at that, the whole front of the car comes off. Can't be good. It doesn't look like they're using a kinetic strap here when they're doing a kinetic recovery and we rip the whole front bull bar off the vehicle. Each of these recoveries went wrong due to a lack of knowledge. I've noticed people are getting confused about the difference between a kinetic recovery and a tow recovery. So I want to show you what the difference is and it's quite subtle. One of these recovery methods is considered relatively safe. You really got very little risk of anything going wrong. The other, the kinetic recovery, can be extremely dangerous. And the vast majority of times, people are performing them incorrectly. So let's find out exactly the difference between tow recovery and kinetic recovery. I'm going to unpack a lot of the detail later in the video, but so you have an initial understanding of the differences between tow recovery and kinetic recovery, this is them. Kinetic recovery involves the recovery device not being tight at the beginning of the recovery, then a run-up of the recovery vehicle of no more than 8 kilometres per hour to achieve a safe amount of energy. Tow recovery is driving forward slowly until the recovery device is tight, stopping and then on the agreed signal, driving away. But let's get into some of the other elements so that we can build your understanding as we go through this video. So what equipment can you use for a kinetic recovery or a tow recovery? Well, for a tow recovery, you can use everything you see here on this bench. You can use a tow strap specifically designed for towing. You can use this strap here, which doesn't stretch and it's been designed as a winch extension strap. It can be used in a number of different ways, but it can be used as a tow strap. You can use chain, you could use steel cable, you could use a kinetic rope like this one here. You could even use a snatch strap, but any of these devices can be used with a tow recovery. What can you use with a kinetic recovery? No, 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 yes, you can use a device that's specifically designed for kinetic recovery. So this recovery rope is designed for that. A snatch strap has been designed for that. And the key difference is these stretch. They'll stretch up to around 18 to 30%, thereabouts, depending on the device. These do not stretch sufficiently to allow them to be used for a kinetic recovery. If in doubt, when you're out there on the field and you're not sure what sort of device you've got, you will not use them for a kinetic recovery. You'll only ever use them to do a tow recovery. Kinetic recovery can generate significant amounts of energy, which is why it works so well. But if it's done without proper training and the correct application, things can go very wrong but when it's done right, it's a very effective recovery method. On my channel in the past, I've covered off how to perform kinetic recoveries, but I do want to do a refresher video specifically about kinetic recoveries. So I'm not going to go into kinetic recovery too much in this video. The danger in kinetic recovery is this. If you've got a vehicle that's traveling at four kilometers per hour and it generates X amount of energy, Let's say you take the four kilometers an hour and you double it up to eight kilometers an hour. So you're now going two times the speed you were before. You're actually now generating 
four times the amount of energy you were at four kilometers an hour. Now, if you go to 16 kilometers per hour, you're going to be generating four times the amount of energy that you were at eight kilometers an hour. So as you can see, the amount of force or energy that you generate with your vehicle is significant. Now, I know some of you don't believe me when I tell you this information, but your belief doesn't change the way the world works. And so if you don't believe me, I'd like you to watch the video I've linked down below by a friend of mine, Robert Pepper, and he goes through the mathematics and explains it all to you so you can understand. A number of years ago, I did a video where I exploded a snatch strap throwing a bow shackle into a tree. The amount of force is terrifying. And if this doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. As a general rule, most kinetic recoveries should be performed at a maximum speed of about eight kilometers per hour or five miles per hour. That is a lot slower than most people are doing their recoveries. I very rarely do a kinetic recovery. It's probably been a couple of years since I've done one, and that should tell you something about how little they should be used. The rare exception is sand. A kinetic recovery on sand is a very effective method when done correctly. I want to address a common misconception that comes around the rating or the size kinetic energy device that you need for your recoveries. So there's a rule of thumb that we use so you get the correct rated strap or, or rope. And it's this, you need one that is rated two to three times the weight of the lightest vehicle in the recovery. So let's say you have a vehicle that weighs three metric tons. Well, two times that is six, three times is nine. So you need a strap that is rated between six and nine metric tons. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that the biggest strap you can get is going to do a better job. It won't. The reason is it won't stretch correctly. For an ideal kinetic recovery, you want that rope to stretch that 30% that it's designed to, or in the case of a strap, it's going to stretch around about 18 to 20%. So what is a tow recovery? I know I've been banging on about the kinetic recovery a heap. Well, a tow recovery is generally speaking connected exactly the same as a kinetic recovery. You're going to connect to the front or rear of the vehicle with a, a suitable attachment point. You're possibly going to use a bridle to connect it up. You're going to connect it exactly the same. You are going to use different equipment as we've already touched on. You can use your kinetic energy rope for a tow recovery. You can only use this strap, a winch extension strap, for a tow recovery. And you can only use this tow strap for a tow recovery, okay? And how do you perform a tow recovery? Well, you simply drive away until the attached device is fully tight, and then on a signal, both drivers start to drive together. And the key thing is, you're only using the traction that the vehicle can generate on the surface. And that is comparatively low compared to the kinetic recovery. And that's why we see a tow recovery as a generally very safe method of recovering a vehicle. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on some of the Factor 55 gear that I'm using in this recovery, just head on over to my website, manmatfourwheeldrive.com.au, and you'll be able to go to the gear store and well, we've got a heap of different products there. Now, just in the interest of disclosure, I do get a bit of a commission from that, so it helps me make these videos that help you out. All right, let's get back into it. I want to demonstrate to you how a kinetic energy rope stretches under the different situations. So the way I've done this, I've connected to the tree just simply as an anchor point and for demonstration purposes only. The first test I'm showing you here is with the rope just pulled tight but no tension on it. Second pull is where I have the traction of the vehicle pulling the rope. That's what we would have in a tow recovery. This demonstration now is the eight kilometers per hour kinetic energy rope pull that we would do doing a kinetic energy recovery. Let me know in the comments down below if this information has been helpful this far, but I now want to show you a tow recovery 
and a kinetic recovery so you can actually see the actual difference of how they look when you perform them. I'm driving the Ford Ranger. Now as I pull forward, I'm setting up for a tow recovery. So we were using a kinetic energy rope. Now you'll see I stop once the rope becomes tight. Now I'm on the radio calling out to Nick and saying one, two, three, go. And I drive off and Nick drives off together and out he comes nice and controlled. From a top view, you can see it happening again. Notice that there's not a lot of energy going on. We're just keeping this nice and safe and controlled. And this is a tow recovery that's done correctly and is very, very effective. So now we've got the D-Max well and truly bogged and I've done this so that we can show you that a tow recovery is not enough. It doesn't generate enough force. We're still connected with our kinetic rope. We could, as I've said earlier, use a chain or a strap in this situation. But as you can see, I'm not getting Nick out. He is well and truly bogged. Because I've got a kinetic rope in place, I can now back up and perform a kinetic recovery. If I had chains or a wire rope in place, I cannot do this kinetic recovery at this point. So now Nick and I are talking about what's going to happen on the radio. And now I drive off at about four kilometers per hour and have a go. No, nope, that wasn't quite enough energy. But nice and slow, gently, gently, we don't need to get carried away straight away. Or at all. Okay, so now I'm going to step up to about eight kilometers per hour. I call one, two, three, and drive off. Little bit more energy. Look at that, there he comes. Now doesn't that look like a nice, controlled, and safe kinetic recovery? And it did the job without people getting threatened with their lives or anything like that. And that's about as fast as a kinetic recovery should be performed. Here it is from a top view. You can see how fast I'm going. It's not that fast, but it's enough to get the job done. Let's have a look at it from another view. There you go. You can see the rope stretches, the kinetic rope stretches, charges up and out we come. Let me know in the comments down below where you've seen kinetic recoveries go wrong or where you've found people not understand the difference between a tow recovery and a kinetic recovery. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.